Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and may you have a good day, Prof. We are from the group Makna Karta, consisting of me, Muhammad Admin bin Muhammad Rasidi, Brother Luman Hakim, Brother Faris Mustaqim, and Brother Aman Afifi. So throughout this presentation, we would love to present our findings on the comparison between the constitutional rule and power of the Malay rulers in the states with the constitutional rule and power of the Yang Dipertuan Agama. To begin with, Malaysia is a constitutional monarchy and parliamentary democracy of federal and state level. So it is made up of 13 states and two federal territories which are divided into two distinct parts of the peninsula Malaysia and East Malaysia provinces of Sabah and Sarawak and North Borneo. So the uniqueness of the monarchy because it has nine hereditary sultans elect from among themselves, Yang Dipertuan Agong for a five-year term. Yang Dipertuan Agong will be the king with a five-year reign as the chief of state of Malaysia. Meanwhile, the Conference of Rulers or Majlis Raja Raja is made up of the nine sultans of the states and the Yang Dipertuan Negeri of the states where no sultan exists such as Malacca, Penang, Sabah and Sarawak. If the place has no rulers, the chief minister or ketua menteri are the heads of the government. Therefore, both Yang Dipertuan Agong and Conference of Rulers have their own constitutional role and power that can be exercised and will be discussed throughout this presentation. Next, let's dive into the first topic to discuss, which is the primary functions of the Conference of Rulers. We can refer to Article 38 and the fifth schedule of the Federal Constitution. All of these functions and shrine will be further discussed throughout this work. So, according to the mentioned article, Conference of Rulers, Article 38, there shall be a Majlis Raja Raja or Conference of Rulers, which shall be constituted in accordance with the fifth schedule. Secondly, the Conference of rulers shall exercise its functions. So there are A, B, C, D, E functions, which is the first one. Electing in accordance with the provision of the third schedule, the Yang Dipertuan Agung and Tiba Yang Dipertuan Agung. Agreeing or disagreeing to the extension of any religious, consenting or withholding consent to any law. Appointing members of the special court, the granting of pardon and peace respites, and also the granting of pardon uh, and appointing members of the special court under clause 1 of Article, article 182. And next, according to Section 38.4 uh, of the Federal Constitution, the consent of the Conference of Rulers was also important in order to pass any law and the Conference of Rulers also needed to be consulted first before any change had been made in the policy affecting Section 153 of Federal Constitution. The mentioned article was just below. Yeah, the first one is Article 38.4. No law directly affecting the privileged position, honors, and dignities of the rulers shall be passed without the consent of COR or Conference of Rulers. And then also Article 38.5 where the Conference of Rulers shall be consulted before any change in policy affecting admin administrative action under Article 153 is made. And then, moreover, the Conference of Rulers also played a vital role in electing and dismissing the Yang Dipertuan Agung. So the, the significance of this power is that the Yang Dipertuan Agung is in some respects to the delegate of the Majlis Raja Raja at the federal level and accountable to the Majlis. And also the Majlis Raja Raja also has the great and dramatic power to dismiss the Yang Dipertuan Agung though uh, this was never exercised uh, and this remarkable power was also laid down under our federal constitution. So this provision is stated here. <coughs> Last but not least, one of the cases that we refer is on the Pang Cheng Hock case whereby this case, uh, referring to the federal court decision, uh, made this observation pertaining to the position and powers of the conference. So the conference of rulers is a constitutional body established under Article 38 of the constitution with certain executive, deliberative and consultative functions. The executive functions are those A. Electing and removing the Pertuan Agung and his deputy B. In the matter of religion, agreeing or disagreeing to the extension of any religious acts, observance or ceremonies to the Federation as a whole C. Consenting or withholding consent to any law such as law which is affect the privileges, position, honors and dignities under clause 4 or law which alters the boundaries of a state and making or giving advice on any appointment which requires the consent of COR and then also under Article 1394, 1412 and 1418 respectively and on any designated appointment of head or deputy or head of department and rulers act in their own discretion. Next, uh, the further will be discussed by my friend. Now, let's move on to legislative veto. The Majlis Raja Raja has the power to veto federal legislation on several critical and sensitive issues. For example, any law affecting the privileges, position, honors, or dignities of the rulers, as mentioned in Article 38, Clause 1, and another one is any law altering the boundaries of the state, as mentioned in Article 2, Clause 3. In relation to amendment of the federal constitution, Article 169 requires that any legislation making an amendment to the following provisions of the constitution shall not become law without the consent of Majlis Raja Raja. Uh, 
and according to Arizona Section 5 of the Article 159, a law making an amendment to Clause 4 of Article 10, any law passed there under the provisions of Part 3, Article 38, Article 63, Clause 4, Article 70, Article 71, Clause 1, Article 72, Clause 4, Article 152, or Article 153 of this clause shall not be passed without the consent of the Conference of Rulers. So what is the uh, what is all the provisions talk about? So this is the list of the provisions as mentioned earlier. So the, uh, the first one is provision of part three, any amendment to provisions regarding citizenship, the second one article thirty eight, any amendment that directly applies to the religious, policy and honors or dignities of the rulers, article sixty three clause four and article sixty two clause four, and an amendment of the constitution that curtail the freedom of speech on the floor of parliament and state legislative assemblies so as to prevent seditious uh, speeches. Uh, article 70, an amendment of the constitution that deals with the presidents of rulers, Article 71, Clause 1, an amendment that grants rights and privileges of the ruler to succeed to the state throne, Article 152, an amendment that dealing with Bahas Melayu as the national language, and Article 153, an amendment on special privileges of Malays and the natives of Sabah and Sarawak, and also uh, Article 159, which stated all these rules. The next one is appointments. The Majlis Federal has the right to be consulted before several critical federal posts are filled. Among these are judges of the Supreme Courts, the Auditor General, and the Chairpersons and members of the Public Services Commission and the Election Commission. The next one is religion. The Sultans are the heads of Islam in their states, but in order to promote unity, the Conference can agree or disagree to the extension of any religious act to the Federation as a whole. The next one is the proceeding against YDPA and the ruler. Rulers is immune from criminal and civil proceeding. However, there are, there, there are a special court, which is called the special court, uh, as mentioned in Article 182, Clause 1. There, are, there shall be a court which shall be known as the special court and shall consist of the chief justice of the lower court, who shall be the chairman, the chief, the chief judges of the high courts, and two other persons who hold or have held office as judge of the lower court or, or high court appointed by the conference of rulers. And this uh, subsection 2, any person lying or against the young people and or the ruler of a state in his personal capacity shall be brought in a special court established under Clause 1. And the subsection uh, uh, clause 3, uh, the, the special court shall have exclusive jurisdiction to try all offences committed in the Federation by the Yang Bikutan Agong or the ruler of a state and all civil cases by or against Yang Bikutan Agong or the ruler of a state, notwithstanding where the cause of action arose. And uh, in the case of the Duri Yang Mahmudia Teku, it is Shah Sultan Sarhuddin Abdul Aziz against the King Holdings in the Amarhat 2003 2MAJ1, the plaintiff filed a claim in 1998 against the, the defendant at the High Court in Kuala Lumpur. In 1999, the plaintiff was appointed as regent of Selangor to exercise the function as Sultan when his father was elected as the 11th YDPA. In July 2001, High Court referred the matter to the Federal Court where the plaintiff comes under the definition, definition of ruler under Article 181 to Article 183. Federal Court answered in negative. Four months later, the father passed away and the plaintiff was proclaimed as Sultan of Langor. Again, High Court referred the case to the Federal Court. The question whether the plaintiff who was appointed to exercise the function as, ruler, as Sultan was a ruler for the purpose of Article 181, 182 and 183 of Federal Constitution. The Federal Court had that as of date when the plaintiff was proclaimed a, a ruler, he acquired all the attributes of sovereignty under Article 181. Although he can sue and be sued in his personal capacity, such proceedings must be brought in the Special Court. The action has to be commenced afresh in the Special Court with the consent of Attorney General. And the next case is Faridah Begum Adwah against Sultan Hadi Ahmad, 1999, MLJ617. The plaintiff was a Singaporean businesswoman and the defendant was the Sultan of Mahang. She alleged that the Sultan had, be, had committed libel against her and sued for damages. The issue is whether a foreigner can sue a ruler under Article 182. As under the Singapore, uh, Singapore's constitution, a Malaysian citizen could not sue the president or the public in any Singapore court. The plaintiff being a Singapore citizen could not be conferred the right to sue the Sultan in this case. Even if parliament were to confer the right of a Singapore citizen to sue the young people that are born or a ruler, such conferment was illegal and ultra-virus Article 155 of the federal constitution. The next one is privileges. Article 38 clause 5 requires that the conference can be consulted before any changes in policy relating to privileges of the Malays and the native of Sabah and Sarawak are made. The next one is pardon. Under Article 42 Clause 5, the conference may exercise the power of pardon in relation to the young people that are going to sultans and the consorts after considering any written opinion of the Attorney General. Uh, Article 42 Clause 5 mentioned that the pardons board constitute for each state shall consist of the Attorney General of the Federation, the Chief Minister of the State, and not more than three other members who shall be appointed by the ruler or young people jointly by but the Attorney General may from time to time by instrument in writing delete his functions as a member of the board to any other person, and the ruler or young people jointly may uh, appoint any person to exercise temporarily the functions of any member of the board appointed by him who is absent or unable to act. Assalamualaikum, my name is Faris. So I will continue for the function of YDPA as an executive body. So referring to the Article 32 Clause 1 of Federal Constitution, in which it states that there shall be a Supreme Head of our Federation to be called Yang Dipaton Agong, who shall take precedence over all persons in the Federation and shall not be liable to any proceedings in any court. So also referring to Article 39, where the Executive Authority of the Federation shall be vested in the Yang Dipaton Agong and exercisable subject to the provisions of any federal law of the second schedule by him or
by the cabinet or any minister authorized by the cabinet but parliament may be confer executive function on another on other person so in the case of uh, Manavan, Manavan Naresh, where Justice Chang Ming Tan, um, in his judgment, uh, he stated that executive powers is in the hands of YDPA and his cabinets. Though the YDPA is with customary and royal courtesy, asked to be pleased to promulgate the ordinances, it is clear that he is at the constitutional monarch, does not refuse, and he has no discretion on this matter. So for Article 40, where YDPA will act on advice, this can be seen from Article 40, Clause 1, where in the exercise of his function under this constitution of federal law, the Yang Ton Agong shall act in accordance with the advice of the cabinet or of a minister acting under the general authority of the cabinet. And also from Article 40, uh, uh, Clause 1, capital A, where in the exercise of his functions under this constitution of federal law, the YDPA is to act in accordance with the advice, on advice or after considering advice, the Yang Ton Agong shall accept and act in accordance with such advice. So, are going to act on his discretion where it can be found from Article 4.2 Clause 2 where the YDPA may act in his discretion in the performance of the following functions. That is to say, first, the appointment of Prime Minister. Second, the withholding of consent to, for a request of the dissolution of Parliament. The last one, the requisition of a meeting of the Conference of Rulers concerned solely with privileges, position, honours and so on. Moving on for are going to appoint um, the PM, cabinet ministers, and also deputy ministers. So, Article 43, Clause 1, where the YDPA shall appoint a Jemaah Menteri, which is cabinet of ministers, to advise him in the exercise of his function. Second, Article 43, Clause 2, where the YDPA shall first appoint a prime minister to preside over the cabinet, a member of the House of Representatives, in his judgment, is likely to command the confidence of the majority of the members of that house. Last one, the artic Article 43, capital A, where the YDPA may, on the advice of the Prime Minister, appoint deputy ministers from among the members of either House of Parliament. So the YDPA as the Supreme Commander of Armed Forces, where it can be found for Article 41, where the YDPA shall be the Supreme Commander of Armed Forces of the Federation and also YDPA as Armed Forces Council, where Article 137 stated that there shall be an Armed Forces Council which shall be responsible under the general authority of the YDPA for the command discipline and so on. Also, YDPA to appoint and remove persons in federal public uh, services. So Article 132, Clause 2, capital A, and um, Article 135 of the uh, Federal Constitution, where all public servants hold office at the pleasure of YDPA. This means that they have no security of tenure, they can be terminated anytime. And also, uh, it can be cited of the case of uh, Government of Malaysia and Mahan Singh, where Sufian LP, um, in his judgment, stated that it was held that the rights in Malaysia are not the same as in India. In Malaysia, there is no continuity of employment, promotion, or pension. And also, Haji Arif and Government of Pahang, uh, it was held that there is no such thing as permanent service in Malaysia, it is clear that every member of public services will officer at the pleasure of the state or the YDPA. So lastly, YDPA to appoint and remove commission established by the constitution. So from Article 114, uh, Clause 1, the election commission shall be appointed by the YDPA uh, after consultation with the Conference of Rulers and shall consist of chairman, deputy chairman and three other members. And also Article 114, Clause 4, notwithstanding any clause in uh, uh, clause 3, the Amton Agong shall by order remove from office any member of the election commission. As for the, regi as for the legislative function, uh, legislative, legislative is one of the components in parliament which plays a big role in the parliament. One of the functions is in making the law, amend the law and replace old laws. There are also legislative procedures in Malaysia's parliament which are drafting the bill, first reading, second reading, House Committee and the last one is the third reading. As regards to the constitutional role and power of YDPA in the legislative body, we can refer to the provision mentioned below, mention, which I will mention after this. Uh, so the first one is appointment of senators. So in this, uh, in this part, we will refer to the Article 45, Clause 1, which is stated that subject to Clause 4, the Senate shall consist of elected and appointed members as follows. A. Two members uh, for each state shall be elected in accordance with the seventh schedule and two members for the Federal Territory of Kuala Lumpur, one member for the Federal Territory of Labuan and one member for the ter Federal Territory of Putrajaya shall be appointed by the YDPA and B. 40 uh, members shall be appointed by the YDPA. So, for the second one is uh, the for, for the second power which is uh, the YDPA can summon prorogue and dissolve the parliament. So, we refer to the article 55 clause 1, which is, is stated that uh, the YDPA shall from 
time to time summon parliament and shall not allow six months to elapse between the last sitting in one session and the day appointed for its first meeting in the next session. So, we also will refer to the article 50, 55, uh, clause 2, which is stated that YDPA uh, may prorogue or dissolve the parliament. So, the third power, which is to remove disqualification of membership of either house. So, we refer to article 48, clause 3, uh, which is, is stated that the disqualification of a person under paragraph D or paragraph E of clause 1 may be removed by the YDPA and shall, if not so removed, cease uh, at the end of the period of 5 years beginning with the date on which the written mention in the said paragraph D was required to be lodged or, as the case may be, the date on which the person convicted as uh, mentioned in the said paragraph E was released from custody or the date on which the fine mentioned in the said paragraph E was imposed on such person and a person shall not be disqualified under paragraph F of clause 1 by reason only anything done by him before he became a citizen. So, moving on to the next power which is to address any house. Uh, so, we refer to article 60 which is stated that the YDPA may address either house of parliament or both house jointly. So, uh, the next one which is giving royal assent. So, uh, we will we'll look at the article 66 cross 4a which is mentioned that if a bill is not assented to by the uh, YDPA within the time specified in clause 4, it shall become law at the expiration of the time specified in that clause in the like manner as if he had assented there too. So, uh, the next power of uh, our constitutional role of YDPA in the judicial function. So, uh, as for the constitutional role and power of YDPA in, in the judicial body, we can refer to the uh, we can refer to it, which is I will mention after this. The first one is appointment of superior court judges. So, in this part, uh, I think we will look at article 122b clause 1, which is it stated that the chief of the federal court, the president of the court of appeal, and the chief judges of the high courts, and subject to article 122c, uh, the other judges of the federal court, of the court of appeal, and of the high courts shall be appointed by the YDPA acting on the advice of the Prime Minister after consulting the Conference of Rulers. So, the next power is uh, the, rem uh, the power to remove of judges upon the recommendation of tribunal. So, we will look at the Article 1 to 5, Clause 3, which is stated that if the Prime Minister or the Lord President after consulting the Prime Minister represent to the YDPA that the judge of the Supreme Court oath to be removed on the ground of misbehavior or of inability from infirmity of body or mind of any or of any cause properly to discharge the functions of his office, the YDPA shall appoint a tribunal in accordance with clause 4 and refer the representation to it and may on the recommendation of the tribunal remove the judge from office. For the next part, which is the other constitutional role. So, uh, the other constitutional role and power of the YDPA is the head of the religion of Islam. Instead, that there are no rulers and also YDPA has the power to grant by them. So, we refer to the article uh, 3, clause 2, which is for the head of the religion of Islam. Instead, there are no rulers. So, in this, uh, uh, in this provision, uh, it stated that in every state, that uh, other than states not having a ruler, the position of the ruler as the head of the religion of Islam in his state in the manner that and in the manner and to the extent and knowledge and declared by the constitution of the state and subject to that constitution all rights, privileges, prerogatives and powers enjoyed by him as head of the religion are unaffected and unimpaired. But in any facts, observance of ceremonies with respect to which the conference of rulers had agreed that they will extend that, that that they should extend uh, to the federation as a whole each of the other rulers shall in his capacity of hate on the religion of islam authorize by uh, the ydpa to represent him uh, next we also look at the article 3 clause 3 and, and article 3 clause 5 so, in the Article 3, Clause 3, the, it said that the Constitution of the State of Malacca 
Penang, Sabah and Sarawak shall each make provision for conferring on the YDPA the position of head of the religion of Islam in the state. So, uh, in the next provision, which is uh, Article 3, Clause 5, uh, it stated that notwithstanding anything in this constitution, the YDPA shall be the head of the religion of Islam in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur, Labuan and Putrajaya, and for his purpose, for this purpose, Parliament may be law make provision for regulating Islamic religious affairs and for constituting a council to advise the YDPA in matter relating to the religion of Islam. So the last power under the, the other constitution rule is uh, the power to grant pardon. So we look at the article 42. The, this article uh, stated that the YDPA has power to grant pardons, reprieves, reprieves and uh, respite uh, in respect of all offences which have been ta uh, tried by the court marital, mar court martial uh, and all offences committed in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur and Lampuan and the ruler of uh, yang di, and the, the ruler or uh, yang di Putua Negeri of a state has power to grant pardons, reprieves and uh, respites in respect of all other offences committed in his state. So in the case of Juraimi bin Hussein, again Lembaga Pengampunan Negeri Pahang and others, uh, it was held that the, that the, the judge stated that the prerogative powers such as prerogative of mercy are not susceptible to judicial review because their nature and subject matter as such as not to be amenable to judicial process. The power of pardon under Article 42 of the Federal Constitution is a prerogative of mercy. Its exercise is therefore not susceptible or amenable to judicial review. So to conclude, in spite of the fact that institution of the king holds a prominent place in both the country's constitution and its legal framework, we can anticipate that what is written into the law would remain unchanged over time. This is due to the fact that constitution is an organic law that is subject to amendment and derives from the existing political structure. Besides, the constitutional and monarchical system is no justification to limit the king's involvement in the country's affairs. Having a constitution gives a king more credibility, which is to approach the problem from the people's point of view and Raising the standard of living for the people can also be seen as exclusive meanings of constitutional monarchy. For the sake of uh, clarity, a constitutional monarch does not imply that the king must always defer to the council of ministers, especially on issues which such obvious political motivations. A constitutional monarch would do well to guarantee that constitutional principles, including those pertaining to the abuse of power, are adhered to, the, to faithfully.